How you doing, you right? Welcome back to Trial Shack, I'm Ian Johnston. Today we're getting stuck into the product reviews, starting with disc brakes for Trials bikes, possibly with a slight street bias. Joining me today is Ben Travis. We're going to be talking you through some of the pros and cons of some disc brakes that we've used, and then rating them out of five for performance, durability, feel good factor, and value for money. Let's get straight to it. Oh, you're on mute. That was me, wasn't it? I put you on mute. Oh, sorry, what are you doing? I'm very well, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not bad, thanks. Good, good. So I actually have a set of MT6s, but it's the same caliper as an MT4. They don't, from what I've seen now, they're not making the MT6 anymore. It's all going to be an MT4 caliper. So the caliper's the same. I've been running them since we went, we went to Lisbon. So what's that, nearly five years ago now? Um, yeah, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, like nearly five years. Basically, Ali was riding them at that time. Ali rode them in Lisbon, and I was having such a pain in the backside with my MT7s and just trying to get them set up right. I just couldn't get them set up right. And then Ali had these MT6s, and I thought these things work all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try a set when I get home and get on with them. And I haven't looked back. Yeah, it was just again not having any any fun with them. I couldn't set them up right, couldn't stop them from scuffing ever so slightly and it was just, I like my wheels to rotate. Like if I'm doing a manual and I pull the front, I like the front wheel to be rotating in the manual, not slowly, slowly just dragging stop, stop dead. And I found that with the MT5s and the MT7s that it always did that. And I, I've, I've tried all sorts of different calipers. I've tried setting them up differently. I've tried every single bit of advice I can think. And that was the only reason. And yeah, genuinely, it was uh, it was actually all on Ali. So should we get him on? We should get we should probably get Ali on. See where he is. There would have been one for just power. Like I, I obviously, I, like my background before that was obviously TGS, and it was all about powerful brakes, Maguras, and I just wanted stop dead brakes. You know, I wanted to do decent sized gap to rails, so you needed a really powerful brake. But with trials, with the street trials stuff, I just find you need a bit more modulation and. Yeah. I found that that's what the MT6s give me, you know, and it's um, and oh, the MT4s and actually, so I guess we can we'll probably get into this a little bit, but I've I've broken a fair few like lever bodies on Maguras, and now I'm running an MT2 lever body with a HC3 lever and a well MT6 caliper. Oh, right. and, you could run the HC3. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of play in it, but it does work. You know, and it is possible to do it. It fits in fine, you know, it's not a problem. And it's just got a tiny little bit of wobble in the play in the lever, which is a bit annoying, but for the for the sake of it, I mean, it's the nicest lever out of the ones that we're going to make. Um, I mean, obviously I know Danny and Duncan are kind of running some special prototypes at the minute, but for me, it's just what I've always felt is the nicest lever. Um, yeah, so I've been running that for quite a while now and I don't see myself changing it anytime soon, you know? Yeah. So I've been running a, an MT5 on the front since 2016. Yeah. And what uh, <coughs> better than there was some ridiculous deal. I think it was J. James Cycles. And it was 80 quid, I think, or 90 quid for two. So. <laughs> Sounds like a price an error, doesn't it? You can't say but, no, can you? No, exactly, yeah. So I've got a set of those, and the front has worked amazing ever since day one, but I just couldn't yeah. get them to work. And yeah. I reflected it, and I changed the pads, and I gave it, I kept on giving it another go, but. I had a Shimano Saint that still worked. Yeah. I, just, I knew that if I stuck that back on, it would work. So I stuck it straight back on. And yeah. then I've been running a bike like that for like the last five years, but I um, cracked my Saint caliper recently and decided to get an MT5 for the rear as well. Yeah. Um, and I was a bit worried that I was going to have exactly the same again and just keep wasting riding time not having a brake that works well. You're just fettling with it, yeah. Yeah, but like, like you said with, um, with the pad clearance that Ali's mentioned before as well with the MT6 calipers, the MT4 calipers, that yeah. you get a bit more pad clearance from the rotor. I yeah. don't have a problem with that now. And the first ride... Uh, Is this on your MT5s? You yeah. don't have a problem. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I did have to re-bleed them twice to get them to be <laughs> Just what you need. nicely. But now that I've, I've done a good job of bleeding them, um, I'm still using the standard pads as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're perfect. They're amazing. I really no rate No pad rubber tail? No. 
I mean, that's yeah, uh, honestly. If, I, if it's a slight bend in my rotor, then yeah, I get pad rub on the front, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the, on the rear at the minute. Well, my biggest problem is I like side ops, and as a street rider, landing on disc rotors is not fun. And I, I still have this urge to just push myself with side ops. I can't just be comfortable and happy with the fact that I can get above bar height on a side up on a four play, you know? I always keep trying to push myself, and then you, you hit your rotor. And that's another reason I only, a few people have asked me this before, why I only run 180 mil rotors. And that's pretty much the reason is I've landed on so many rotors bent them flexed them and they're so delicate you know it's if you if you catch it just enough and it starts rubbing that's my ride ruined because yeah. brake noise is a ride ruiner for me and listen i'm not the kind of person who's setting my bike up to the perfect level you know i'm not adam reed from tarty bikes or something like that when my bike runs prim primo all the time it's it's fairly sketch at times to be honest but <laughs> brake noise brake rub and brake noise just infuriates me and if i if i can't get it right I ju it just puts me out of the mood you know i'm not in the zone for filming i'm not in the zone for really riding so it just ruins it um yeah i found that um i often hover my fingers over the brake levers yeah especially the rear i'll, I'll just pull it in ever so slightly and uh -huh. i've got the biggest fear of going to bunny up up something and going front wheel first into it and if you're dragging your back brake as you go you go to bunny up up something sometimes that happens and it's yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah disgusting so i'm exactly the same in terms of the pad clearance i've liked the idea of trying these other um calipers yeah but at the moment i can't complain about the mt5s at all but if i start getting problems then i'm going to be coming straight back to that and thinking oh maybe i should try something different that's what i was going to five calipers and the mt7 calipers are the same the mt4 yeah. calipers and the mt6 calipers are the same so you're yeah. you're quite happy running you're basically running an MT4 caliper and an MT2 lever. Um, like one of the most basic Magura brakes you can get. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I can't, I would never justify getting an MT7 when I know that I can get a set of MT5s for the same price as one MT7. But I wanted to ask about MT7 lever bodies and braking. So you've had a problem with MT7 levers. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have cracked two MT5 lever blades. Yeah, but the lever body. I've not had a problem with it, but then I haven't smashed it into any walls. I don't think. <laughs> so the thing is, is the the HC3 lever is aluminium and it's really strong. So I've never had a problem. I think I've I've snapped one, and that was a real hell of a crash. You know, I I probably hurt myself as well. So it was um that was and I was all tangled up in the bike. But other than that, I actually find that so if your lever body's down like this, you know. If you hit something, so my lever blade's coming out towards the camera. If you hit something on here, there's in the MT7 bodies, I believe, I don't know this for certain, but I think there's two cavities in there. So where they've hollowed it out to obviously save some, some weight. Oh, right, yeah. And what happens is the fluid then starts leaking past. So when you pull the lever blade, ever so, sl ever so slowly, it always just ends up coming all the way back to the lever really slowly, all the way back to the handlebar, sorry. Um, yeah, and it just, and that's it, the lever's completely goosed, you know, it's no use anymore. So I've done that on several occasions. And I think that's why I actually spoke with Mark Westlake and just, he just said, listen, why don't you try the MT2? I think you can fit the HC3 levers to it. And I tried them and as I say, I've never, never looked back. And I think, oh, I can't remember, don't quote me on it, but I think you can get an MT2, MT4 full setup, which is an MT2 lever. It's the same lever body with an MT4 caliper for less than, like 60 pounds, I think. Yeah, I've got uh, 67.99 for an MT4. Yeah, so, well, so, excuse me, I was like eight quid out, but yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> given given that a, a set of MT7s are gonna cost you oh, X amount. Yeah. Well, exactly, I mean, it's, and the thing is, is it's not so much that I'm not questioning their, you know, their, um, their capability or that, it's just, you know, not everybody's got 300 quid to smash and I don't know what Magura's warranty policy is like in terms of getting an MT7 because trials use is very different to mountain bikes you know. Right so if we skip forward to the ratings then what ratings have you given for the uh, MT4? Oh, so the MT4 um, I guess we we'll go through them category by category. Uh, yeah so I give. Do you, is it a beautiful break? <laughs> is it a beautiful break? Yeah, I mean, 
No, no, it's not. I mean, <laughs> the, the MT4 is not. I mean, it's just a plain black caliper, right? You can you could maybe fancy it up with one of the plastic rings they've got on it to whatever colour you want, but no, it's not. It's not something you look at and you go, oh my God, that is the one. If you want to spend the money on a shiny MT8 caliper or a you know an MT7, it, that's far different. You know they look they look a lot nicer. They're a bit more bling. So I think you know it's feel good factor. I give the MT4 kind of a three. Um, just though it's middle of the road. You know it's nothing, nothing special. It's not going to be uh, nothing to shout about. So um, value for money though, MT4 is going to be a five. You know, as we just said, I mean, you're talking 67 quid, 68 pounds yeah. for a full for a full break. That's going to give you, you know, it works. I've I've had no problem. I mean, without blowing my own trumpet, I've done some reasonably big stuff on it and it's never really let me down. It's it's always kind of tires slipping on something before my brake slips. In most cases, I've had the same issues with MT5s, MT7s in terms of needing to be re bled or if I've damaged levers and stuff. So yeah, value for money, it's a five. And you get good replacement parts as well. The parts are really cheap to replace. I think we've kind of discussed this. I think the, you know, the calipers are really good. I've never had an issue with the calipers, maybe a sticky piston here and there, which was easy enough to solve. But in reality, the, it's the lever body issue. And again, that's an unfortunate one. It's just on how you hit it. it but the durability is pretty good. Um, so I give that a four. And then performance. So <laughs> this is questionable because for me they were perfect. So I could say a five, but I think as a general for you know for everybody and for everybody's preferences, I think a lot of people will want more bite and more hold than maybe the MT4 caliper might give. Certainly with standard pads. So I kind of I've said three and a half, but if I can't give half stars, then I'm going to go up and give it a four. So they're good breaks all round. I mean, as I say, if you're on a bit of a budget. They're definitely worth a look at from the MT4s from my perspective. MT7s. So you, I thought you were running MT7s before you were running these. So you, I didn't realise you are actually running MT5s. I've had both on. I have tried MT. Okay. I have I have run MT7s. So I, I didn't. Did I get some when they first came out? I don't think so. But I've I've i kind of jumped between the MT5s and the MT7s. So I have tried them. And I, I mean, as we as we said, right, is that I know you've got MT5s on, so you're going to give them. So you've given them some ratings as well. But in the same manner, other than the lever body, or the lever body possibly been a bit different and a bit of a weight, and you get a different lever blade with it, is that it's the same break, right? You know, it's got a bit more adjustable adjustability because if you actually try adjusting the mt7s the some of the dials don't do anything they're just they're basically <laughs> they're, they're basically there for sure sorry magura but yeah they, that needs a bit it might work on a mountain bike but on a, in trials it's just they don't do anything so but i'll give i'll give them the ratings i think i i think i can give you a decent rating um but yeah so mt7s performance definitely a five like the the power on them brakes when they're set up right with the right kind of row. I mean, I know Danny rides two, two or three rows or 200 mil rows, whatever size he runs, the big ones, but that, you know, his brakes are ridiculously powerful, you know, and they they just hold everything. And, and, and rightly so, given the size of some of the stuff that he's doing, you know, so performance, give them a five. Durability four, um, again, the same reason as before that if you just, you know, if you hit them in the wrong place, they can be broken and you don't get an MT7 lever for cheap, you know? Yeah. The, dur the durability is risky, but as I say, more, yeah, so four on them, I think. Feel good factor, five. I mean, if you're paying 300 quid for brakes, you're going to feel good about them. You know, you're, you're going to think, oh, these these things are, you know, the finish on them is really good. You know, you get the, depending on which model you get, you get all sorts of, you can get all the, the customizable stickers and bits and pieces you can get all the upgraded um, kind of O-rings that go in the side of the pistons. Um, so yeah, I give them a five for feel good factor on them because they do look cool. And especially if you get the race line ones, I mean, the, they only fit certain bikes, you, you know, it depends on your color scheme, right? But if you get yeah. the race line yellow ones, as an old school trials rider, everybody wanted race lines back in the day, but we couldn't all afford them back then. And 
no, we can't afford them now either. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just the value of value for money, uh, so three for me. I mean, it's the, as I say, with a bit of the issues I've I've had with them previously in terms of leave a body, you know, and, and not being cheap to replace. You know, I've given them a three. It's it's three hundred pounds for a set of brakes. You know, it's a lot of dosh. I, and you know, it's funny because when you sent them through, I was like, oh, well, which one does like. It's on the same performance, but then in performance, it depends what you want. Some people like bite, some people like hold, some people like modulation, right? And yeah. I mean, I want all of that. I want one break that does all of that, but it's just, I don't think it's possible. You know, somebody, and, and, and that's why it leads for someone like Ali to be fiddling about with breaks so much and trying to find the perfect break for him. But I just, I kind of just yeah, prefer it goes to- a long way, doesn't it? That- what he's done with trying out so many different products and combinations of brake levers and uh, calipers and things like that. I think, yeah, that's actually really valuable. I'm, I'm really grateful he has. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad somebody else is doing it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not me. My thoughts on the MT5 is that for performance, now that I've got them set up right, I've given them a four because I've got the, the right lever feel, I've got modulation, I've got bite and I've got hold. And they've they've got that sound, you know, when you're running the hands, and you uh, you can you can lift you pull the lever and you can hear the pads hitting the rotor. Doosh. Yeah. Just like a yeah. It just gives so, you a little bit of confidence that yeah that brake's work gonna work for you. So, so why yeah. not a five then? I feel I think... like for me it's perfect. Yeah. But with all the messing about I've done to get them working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay, right. That's fine. Yeah, that makes sense and you haven't got the adjustability. I think that's the thing that's not quite made it a five. I've got the HC1 lever on the front and that's got a nicer feel to the lever blade to the, than the standard one, but they've still yeah. just got the one um, bolt for adjusting the bite and reach at the same time. And I've never really liked the fact that doing some adjustment like that means that the, the bite's coming in, but the lever blade is moving in with it as well. Yeah, it's that thing about lever travel as well, isn't it? That's the thing. It's that you don't. It's not necessarily just you might actually want the lever to travel, you know, to be sat quite far out, but to travel yeah. quite far. So as you say, you're like me, is that you kind of, by the sounds of it, you preload essentially your your lever at all time. Yeah, you, you, you want to drag it. them, but without them dragging. Yeah, I'm scared of speed <laughs> as well. Yeah. Much, are we? <laughs> no, exactly. Okay, right. That sounds good for a four. Okay, I'll give you that one. <laughs> And in terms of durability, again, I've given them a four. I've cracked two lever blades in five years. I think that's pretty good. If I wasn't cracking lever blades, then I'd be giving it a five, but I am. <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, if you can figure out that half star thing, then you can maybe give it a four and a half, because two in five years isn't really that bad, given probably, I mean, you and I are both the same. We, we, we do crash from time to time, so <laughs> it's- uh... Yeah, I've definitely had my money's worth from that break. Yeah, sounds like um, it. So from value for money, I'm skipping past to feel good factor. Feel good factor, I've given four stars. Yeah. I think they look pretty cool, but they are plain black. I think the HC1 lever, the same lever blade, same as the HC3, makes it have a bit more about it to look at. But yeah. It's not the thing that I look at the most on the bike, and the fact that it's black means that it looks a bit stealthy. Um, I feel good about it because of the value for money. Yeah, yeah. No, I would agree. The value for yeah. money, again, I've given it a five because I don't mind if I smash it into a wall and have to buy a new one because it's not too expensive. No, that's it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, as you say, though, it's like that feel good factor as we're going back to the MT7, you know, as you say, you get a race line yellow. You see any of the boys that have got the, or, or girls that have got their, their fancy bikes and then they've got the, you see the pop in hit like race line yellow. And you're not just drawn to the colour of their custom Santa Cruz bike, you know. You're like, oh, them brakes look really sweet with that blue. Or, you know, those brakes look really sweet with that, whatever colour it is, you know, and they yeah. pop. Whereas, as you say, if, if you put your brakes, the MT5, on a Santa Cruz custom trials bike, you're not going to be going, oh, them brakes look really cool, are you? You just, because yeah. you won't notice them because they're plain black, you know. So, yeah, I agree, yeah. Sounds about right. So those are mine. I did say that I was going to review the Shimano MA10s, but I actually feel like they're a bit irrelevant. I know you can still get old ones, but... You need to speak to John Shrewsbury. He's got every single MT 
M810, I think, in, or certainly the levers by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got all of the stock. Oh, Cocky as well. I think Cocky's got quite a few of them as well. That lever, I mean, that lever body was ridiculous. I actually bent, I bent a few of the, the lever blades and managed to bend them back on the M M810 and it was not a problem, you know, and it yeah. worked fine. It was not an issue, but as you say, I think they're not really gettable anymore. You can't really buy them, so unless you oh, yeah. hit the right person. So basically what we're saying is the M810s were perfect. Well, except for weight, though. Perfect. <laughs> except for weight. Star ratings for Shimano M810 brakes. For performance, would you agree that they're probably a five? Oh yeah, yeah. Their power was amazing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then durability. Would you agree they're probably a five? <laughs> I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. But you can bend the lever blade. Well, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, right. but and as I said to you before, oh well, as I said before, I think the calipers would have lasted a lot better if we didn't have all the adapters. You know, if, we, if I was running out on the four play that or the hex that they've got now with the bolt on, uh, sorry, the straight on post mount, I think we'd have had so many less issues that we'd have had people would have still been running them and then feel good factor five <laughs> yeah that little gold the little gold the little gold dial on the lever that was the uh, it was always that thing it was just because i think it just because it was like a a stealth black wasn't it and it's one it's funny because we've just given loads of grief to all the other brakes for just being straight black and just not being anything special but now we're seeing that this this completely black break apart from one little gold dial is a uh, feel good factor best looking break you've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> and then value for money i think full price these were 190 quid each weren't they yeah they were pretty expensive so if you do want to get some now i did see it there <laughs> on ebay for 165 quid the other day so i think it's still possible to get them second hand for just under 200 quid by the time this comes out Ian Johnston will have already bought it, so they won't be available <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> yeah. But oh. for value for money, they probably can't get five star. I mean, if you think they're they're amazing brakes, then you probably would you'd be willing to spend that money on them. But from comparing them to the brakes we're comparing them to, I don't think they can be as good value for money as as an MT5 or an MT4. So I don't think so. No. Four for that. I don't know if you disagree. Maybe a three. I mean, as I say, I mean, I know we're not talking brand new now, but 190 quid for a break, even in its heyday. I mean, that's, as I say, that was five, six years ago now. And it's, I mean, 190 quid back then is uh, a lot of money as well. And yeah. I mean, I give the MT7 to three and they're about the same, you know, they're a bit cheaper actually by the sounds of it than what you would have paid, but three or a four. Uh, three, yeah, three or a four, you know, 3.5. Yeah, get your half stars <laughs> out. <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks very much for joining me and having a chat about no problem. It'd no be problem. cool to get you on again and have um, a bit more of a chat about Brad's related stuff. Maybe Sounds interview. good. Yeah, I'd be well enjoy that bit. Yeah, definitely. See ya. Cheers, buddy. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. Hopefully, some of that was useful. Thanks for joining me. For giveaway details, you can check the story highlight on the Trial Shack Instagram page. There'll be some more updates on there coming soon on how I've rearranged stuff in here a little bit. Next week I've got an interview with Luke Livesley, also known as Cocky, from in the summer. I caught up with him at Radical Bikes on their opening weekend, did a bit of filming and I've held that back so that's coming up next. See you soon! Bye!